Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about 8 times Pawn Stars manipulate their customers. If you guys are a fan of Pawn Stars, make sure to leave a like on the video and also don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when we release our daily videos. And with all that being said, let's get right into the video. Number 1. They gang up on customers to cheat them. How are you doing, gentlemen? Oh, pretty good. I have a bronze statue I like to sell. Do you know much about it? I don't know what to tell you about that. This is a it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that pawn stars have certain tactics in order to get their customers to part the way with their items while getting as little money as possible for them. And one of these tactics is to gang up on them. I don't mean in a physical way, there is no violence involved, but if one guy is insulted by an offer from one of the pawn stars, he starts to get annoyed. Another star will storm up and start having words, and before you know it, you've got four guys on one telling him there is no way he'll find a better deal anywhere else. It just wouldn't be possible when you're trying to sell an item and you have people who seem to be knowledgeable about these things, telling you that you won't find any better offer. Of course, you'll agree to the sale. But they're actually just running a scam on you. Don't trust pawnbrokers, just don't. You know, the uh, seller had bought it from an estate sale, and um, it'd been in the family for generations, and uh, I was fortunate enough to get it. What do you think it's worth? Fits on. Number two, Chris Craft Boat. Rick's friend Spencer called up the shop and said he had a great lead on a boat. So I thought I'd hop on a plane, come out to Harsons Island, Michigan. This boat was picked up by one of the pawn guys for a measly $16,500 that was not too bad. It needed some work and a guy who brought it in just couldn't afford to get it done. He wanted no less than $20,000 for it, but it ended up leaving $3,500 short of it. Too bad for him, after putting a few grand into a boat, it ended up fetching about $3,000 for it. I bet when the guy wanted watched the episode, he must have felt sick to his stomach when he could have ended up making some good money for that thing. Instead, the pawn stars do what they do best. They seem to love nothing more than an unfair deal so long as it will get them some money that they want. And what's really sad is that the pawn guy who brought in the boat in the first place had a hunch for what its actual price might be. Uh, and guess what? Your boy Chum Lee found it for you. Hey, wait a minute, bro. Yeah. I'm the one who put the legwork in. I found this boat. Now I know why you didn't want him coming out here. Number three, their experts proposably lowball the customers. That is one ugly gun. One of the goofiest designs. That's a Navy gun, and it's pretty to me. This really pisses me off about the show. First off, I definitely question whether or not these experts on the show are actually experts in their given fields. I mean, it's reality TV, so when there's already a lot of fakey... And here's the thing, even if they were truly experts, they will never give the seller coming into the store better a deal than the pawnbrokers. Why? Because they work on their show as pawnbrokers. If I was a customer there and was looking to sell something, I would definitely not use their experts to appraise the item I'm selling. I'd bring my own thank you very much. Don't you think that it's a little bit of a conflict of interest when suddenly an expert appears from backstage and says, oh yeah, that would go for about $1,000, when it's actually worth $40,000. But they're looking to help out the pawn stars because of how much money they're making. No, I'm thinking more like 1250 though, I really am. You know, I was hoping to get about 1800 for the gun, okay? Yeah, well, I think that's we fair. we want to get out of. It's a weird gun, so... Six. Number four, the Hotchkin Cannon. That's no, an 1890s Hotchkiss Cannon. Uh, they say it was used in the Indian Wars. It just sits in my front room. I have it facing the front door for anybody. Alright, before I really dig into this one, I do have to admit one thing that the guy who brought in the cannon definitely screwed himself over out of money just as much as the pawn stars did. When this cannon is from 1890s showed up at the pawn shop, an expert was immediately brought in to make sure it was a legit and to estimate the current value of this historical piece. Well, the experts came back with $40,000, the guy who brought in the cannon was over the moon and said he had only expected to to get a snag at 3000 for it. Well, that's all it took for one of the guys to shake his hand and pass him 30000 and say thanks for coming out. He did set himself up for giving away his lower expectations, but it's still a scummy move to just turn around when it seems a deal is on the table and say, oh, okay, I'll give you $10,000 less than what we were going to. 
That's 30,000. Now it's going to go up every time he shoots it. <laughs> cannon fired, a deal's a deal, and I own a cannon. I hope I did a good thing. I Number five, they cheat a lot of people by faking a lot of the show. Silver Pond in Las Vegas combine the best aspects of reality TV. The gruff family dynamics of Duck Dynasty and the... This is a different sort of cheating. This is the kind of cheating that gets Pawn Stars ratings so that the show can stay on the air. And the guys can keep making their massive sums of money from both the show and the items brought into their store. You might notice that there is always a ton of customers in the store during an episode. But you didn't notice that none of them are always focusing on. And none of them ever go up to the Pawn Stars on the show. Do you know why? Why? Because they're put there to make the place look busy while the shot of the episode. The guys aren't allowed to actually work on the counter during regular work hours because of some privacy policies. So they bring in people to be the customer crowd and then they bring in the big clients who are selling the items decided to showcase in whatever episode they're shooting. Pretty sad and kind of sketchy. And then the rest would just become all a big flow. But I want to go back to the bottom signature. Whole name is connected. And he's doing the same thing here. John Paul Jones. Number six, screwing over their manager, so Wayne reality Jeffries. Reality shows usually go on forever. Pawn Stars is one of the prime examples. When we saw it for the first time back in 2009, this series about four guys running... There is something I definitely didn't know until I started researching this article. It turns out that the guys who run the pawn shop on Pawn Stars are so sketchy that they even screwed over their own manager, Wayne Jeffries, is allegedly the man who discovered the Pawn Stars back in 2007 and landed them their hit show on several networks. And I have to be honest when I say I wish he didn't discover them at all. I'm sure he feels the same way now, especially since he has a lawsuit out on them. Apparently, several networks executives approached the cast about pushing Jeffries out of the picture, and well, always focusing on their money is not really caring about other people and their well-being. It made total sense for them to give a boot to the guy who found them and gave them their TV careers in the first place. Aired on July 19th, 2009. The premise and the characters were established from the very start and not much changed changed in the years to come. It just became... More Number seven, they're so notorious that they get banned the from yard sales. The ice and the shaved ice would come down there and there you go. All right. Ever heard the term have a coke and a smile? Yeah. It's because I think this is one of the most hilarious stories from this article. It's not about a specific moment where the Pawn Stars guys cheated anyone, but it has to do with how notorious they are now around thrift communities. Apparently, Rick from the show can't go out to a yard sale without being told to F off. Everyone seems to be learning just how underhanded the guys on the show are and how they don't want them prowling around their old wares. That is hilarious to me because yard sales are usually full of stuff going for cheap. But I guess if Rick shows interest in an item, the seller decides to hold him onto it. It makes sense and in the way that it seems like a customer are now screwing over the pawn guys, but still just goes to show how well known they are for screwing over their customers. What the hell is this? It's a cast iron ice shaver. So it makes snow cones? Yeah. yeah. So where'd you get it? Um, from a garage sale. Yeah. Number eight, the Colt Point 45 Peacemaker. Cool. Do you know much about it? I know it's an old piece. I want to say 1800s. This is a very early Colt single action arm. So a guy walks into the shop with a Peacemaker Colt Point 45 from the 1800s. It's a legit but not in mint condition. To be fair here, the guy who was looking to the pawn guys with the gun did not outright say he bought the item for $25. Either way, it didn't take much for the brown broker Rick to come along with the price he didn't even consult with one of his sleazy experts. When he dished the price, he settled with a deal for the guy of $3,000. Sounds like a pretty good deal, considering the guy had originally purchased the gun for only $25. However, when Rick decided to look up the actual price of the gun, its minimum going price was about $5,000, and considering the quality, if there was a little more money spent on refurbishing it, the gun can go over for about $40,000. Like okay, um... They're saying... 
Thanks for watching today's video and 8 times Pawn Stars manipulated customers. If you're a fan of Pawn Stars, make sure to leave a like on the video and comment below telling us your favorite pick. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when we release our daily videos. And from everyone here at the channel, have a great day.